walking down to business. And uh, these are just some of the newer examples in addition to all the longstanding workforce development programs we have at DEED, in addition to what all is being done uh, by colleagues across the state, uh, rather across state government, uh, where other agencies like Office of Higher Education, Department of Human Services, and Department of Education, just to name a few, also have workforce development uh, programs that they're implementing. Next, let's talk about a set of indicators that probably have the single greatest impact on how people are feeling about the economy, and that is the comparison between wage growth and inflation. So the very good news here is that wage growth in Minnesota is faster than at the national level, and that our wage growth in Minnesota is outpacing inflation, which ultimately gives workers uh, more purchasing power on average. So average hourly wages for all private sector workers in Minnesota increased 14 cents to $37.12 in May of 2024 over the month, and the over-the-year average hourly earnings increased $1.92, or 5.5%. So for the U.S., private sector wages actually decreased by $0.04 cents over the month, again, in contrast to our $0.14 cent increase. And over the year, uh, wages grew by 4% at the national level, versus Minnesota's 5.5%. Okay, so that's the wage growth information. Now compare that to inflation. Uh, the consumer price index, a common measure of inflation, rose 3.3% over the year in May, meaning that the wage growth in Minnesota has outpaced inflation over the year, which is good news. So with that, I will stop and hand it over to my colleague, Angelina, for a deeper dive on the details. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to dive into job change by super sector. So over the month, seven super sectors in Minnesota gained jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis, and I'm going to list them in order of the number of jobs gained. So education and health services uh, led with the biggest gain of 2,800 jobs, which is a 0.5% increase. Government gained 1,200 jobs, up 0.3%. Leisure and hospitality gained 900 jobs, up 0.3% as well. Financial activities was up 800 jobs, which is a 0.4% growth. Other services gained 200 jobs, uh, up 0.2%. Construction gained 100 jobs, up 0.1%. And information gained 100 jobs, up 0.2%. Four super sectors lost jobs over the month. Uh, for Minnesota. And again, I'll mention them in order of the number of jobs lost. So professional and business services let the loss, the biggest loss um, of 9,300 jobs, uh, which is a uh, downward decrease of 2.5%. Uh, manufacturing lost 3,700 jobs, down 1.1%. Trade, transportation, and utilities lost 1,600 jobs, down 0.3% and mining and logging lost 100 jobs, down 1.5%. So overall, the gains were smaller than the losses, um, and therefore, in net, uh, Minnesota lost 8,600 8, jobs over the month on a seasonally adjusted, adjusted basis, which uh, in percentage terms is 0.3% decline. Uh, the private sector lost 9,800 jobs, uh, which is a 0.4% decline. I want to mention um, the prior month's report for April. Uh, seasonally adjusted job growth was revised up uh, 800 jobs. So the final estimate is that we gained 4,700 jobs between March and April, rather than the originally estimated uh, 3,900 jobs. Next slide, please. Now we're going to look at labor force. Um, our labor force size decreased by 1,482 people over the month, uh, so totaling just under uh, 3.1 million people uh, for May. The number of employed decreased by 3,199 workers, and the number of unemployed decreased by 1,717 uh, workers. So Compared to pre-pandemic in February 2020, our labor force is about 31,634 people smaller um, than what it was. Uh, labor force participation rate stayed at 68%, and it has been uh, steady around the 68% mark for um, years coming out of the pandemic. Next slide, please. 
Uh, looking at over the year job change, Minnesota gained um, almost 35,000 payroll jobs over the year, which is a 1.2% growth rate. So still uh, steady, good growth. The U.S. over the year growth rate uh, is 1.8%, and, and as usual, is a little uh, faster. Minnesota's private sector gained more than 12,000 jobs, up 0.5%. U.S. private sector uh, was up 1.6 percent. So for Minnesota, um, five super sectors posted positive growth over the year, and I'm going to list them by number of jobs uh, change. So education and health services uh, let the gain with um, 31,270 jobs, which is a 5.6 percent growth for Minnesota. And growth was propelled mostly by the healthcare and social assistance sector, uh, which grew 6.1%, as well as uh, the educational services sector, which grew 1.7%. And Minnesota outpaced the U.S. Uh, growth in the super sector. So by comparison, the U.S. grew 4.2%. The next uh, big grower is government uh, super sector. Uh, gaining almost 23,000 jobs over the year, which is a 5.4% growth rate for Minnesota. And that's outpacing the U.S. growth rate of 2.8%. And growth was health healthy across all subsectors sub under government. Uh, leisure and hospitality uh, is third, uh, gaining more than 7,100 jobs, which is a 2.6% growth rate. And all subsectors grew uh, under leisure and hospitality. Um, and nationally, this super sector grew at a similar rate of 2.5%. Other services gained more than 3,000 jobs over the year, uh, so up 2.7% in Minnesota, and outpacing the U.S. rate of 1.7%. And all subsectors uh, posted growth under other services. Mining and logging gained 22 jobs over the year, which is a 0.3% growth for Minnesota, while the U.S. Um, saw a decline in this super sector uh, of 1.1%. And then looking at the super sectors that lost jobs over the year, um, there were six uh, for Minnesota. And again, I'm going to mention them by um, the order of number of jobs lost. So professional and business services uh, led with uh, more than 16,300 jobs lost, which is a 4.2% decline over the year. Um, by comparison, the U.S. grew 0.5% uh, for the super sector. And the majority of subsectors under professional and business services saw a decline for Minnesota. Um, the biggest percentage decline was in employment services, which was down 12.3%. Uh, uh, the two subsectors that experience growth here are um, architectural engineering and related services, which grew 3.2%, and accounting, tax preparation, bookkeeping, and payroll services, which grew 1.7%. Um, the other subsectors under professional business services uh, saw a decline. Uh, second is manufacturing uh, super sector. Uh, they lost more than 4,500 jobs, which is a 1.4% decrease, uh, while the U.S. grew 0.2%, and most subsectors under manufacturing experience declined over the year. Uh, financial activities lost uh, almost 4,000, yes, 4,400 jobs over the year, uh, down 2.3%, while the U.S. grew 0.4%. And um, again, losses were uh, across all subsectors under financial activities. Um, information lost a little more than 2,200 jobs, down 4.9%. And all subsectors saw a decline here. Um, the U.S. also experienced decline in the super sector, uh, down 1.4%. Um, construction lost about 1,200 jobs over the year, so a 0.9% decrease. And all subsectors here saw uh, over the year loss, except for heavy and civil engineering construction, which we still continue to see growth. Um, and th for this month's report, uh, over the year growth is 3.2%. Um, the U.S., uh, on the other hand, the construction super sector grew 3.2%. And then lastly, trade, transportation, and utility, utilities lost um, about 750 jobs, um, down 0.1% for Minnesota. 
um, we see retail trade growing slightly at 0.5%. Uh, wholesale trade saw no change at all, and transportation, warehousing, and utilities declined 2%. Um, and nationally, the super sector grew a little bit at uh, the rate of 0.7%. So next slide. And lastly, um, I'm going to talk about wages and inflation. So average hourly wages for all private sector workers in Minnesota, as the commissioner mentioned, increased 14 cents um, in May 2024. And over the year, it grew 5.5%, uh, which is a, a good solid uh, growth rate. And nationally, um, private sector wages decreased four cents over the month and uh, grew 4% over the year. So both uh, Minnesota wage growth and U.S. wage growth um, outpaced inflation, uh, which was at 3.3% for May. Um, and that has generally been the case for uh, a year now is that wage growth um, is either at pace or um, outpacing inflation. So that's good news for for workers. Um, and that's all I have. Commissioner, back to you. Very good. Thanks, Angelina. And with that, I think we can open the floor for any questions. So I see so, Emma's yep. yep, go ahead, Alicia. There you go. go ahead. So yeah, I'd like to read it out. Um, thank you, Emma, from the Star Tribune. Thanks for taking questions. You're able to shed any light on what contributed to the big declines in professional and business services month over month and year over year. Yeah, so um, the month over, over the month change is um, the bulk of that happened in, let me look up the... This, um, the bulk of that happened in, um, I have to pull up my notes, sorry guys. It happened in one subsector um, and it is a, It is a um, a broad uh, subsector that includes employment services. Um, let me look it up. Again, anyone as well, Angelina is looking for those um, data points. If anyone has questions, again, please do feel free to put them in the chat, or if you'd like to ask them verbally, just use the raise hand function along the top. Okay, all right. I found it. Um, so over the month change, the bulk of the drop happened in administrative and support and waste management and remediation services, which is a really broad category. Um, and it accounted for more than 8,000 um, job loss that we saw over the month. So at this point, um, it's one data point, uh, not a uh, Tre uh, trend over times, so I would wait and see um, what the future months will will show us for uh, professional and business services. In terms of over the year, um, the change for professional and business services jobs, uh, the biggest decline happened in employment services, which includes a staffing agency. And this may be related to um, like a slowdown or like a moderation in manufacturing if um, that uh, industry is relying less on staffing agencies or temporary hiring agencies to, to fill their roles. Thanks, Angelina. Emma, any follow up questions or anyone else with questions today? Well, uh, seeing none, I will put my um, email address in the chat over there. If you have any follow-up questions, please do reach out. I'd be happy to follow up on those. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to the commissioner for the last word. Great. Thanks, Alicia. And thanks again, everybody who joined today. And normally, I kind of wrap it right up here, but don't go yet because I did want to share, in addition to just a little recap, um, touch on some other economic indicators uh, drawn partly from data that DEED produce. First of all, though, in terms of a recap, uh, again, the labor force participation rate held steady uh, at that 68.0. Uh, 
uh, and the unemployment rate ticked up one tenth to 2.8%. Uh, we noted the net job loss of 8,600 uh, down from that record level that we had achieved in April. Um, we will keep a close eye, of course, on job and labor force growth, but pleased to note that we've had um, gains in nine out of 12 the last month. Um, and the good news uh, when it comes to wage growth is that we are outpacing inflation and also outpacing the national rate. So now just to transition uh, as kind of a, a closing set of observations, wanted to touch on a set of indicators produced by the Grow Minnesota program at the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. They just published their 2024 State of Business Retention and Expansion in Minnesota report. And uh, there they collect and analyze data from DEED as well as a variety of other sources to give another perspective on how the economy is doing. And while some of the coverage of this report has already noted that our growth somewhat lagged comparison states over a five year time frame, uh, the most recent numbers for 2023 I thought were quite encouraging. Uh, the report notes that we had 113 business expansions last year that were like reportable and that were discoverable uh, by the folks that did the report. And that's up from 93 in 2022. And the 2023 figure was the highest recorded in over a decade. Uh, key projects that they note include Mayo Clinic's expansion, the Meta Data Center, Polar Semiconductors expansion, and Solugen's new biomanufacturing facility in Marshall. Uh, and I'm proud to say that DEED and the Walls administration have played a role in many of those key projects. The report also cites Site Selection Magazine and noting that these results moved Minnesota into first out of seven states that make up the West North Central region in total number of projects, and then fifth out of 12 states in the broader Midwest region. And then finally, um, foreign direct investment into Minnesota was at its highest level since 2014, with 14 reported projects accounting for $912 million in capital expenditure. And these are just the kinds of trends that the governor is working to drive when he leads uh, business development missions and trade development missions uh, like our trip last week to Canada, for example, or last year's efforts in Australia and Japan. So between the labor market info we shared and then these business indicators, uh, we have what I think are an interesting set of additional insights on the Minnesota economy. So with that, uh, hoping you can all join us for our next employment numbers release on July 18th. And thanks once again for joining us. Have a good day. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone.